today I'm going to be talking about two different kinds of Seroquel, the instant release and the extended release. How are they similar? How are they different? But first I need to tell you that I have schizoaffective disorder, which means that I experience symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions and hallucinations, but also symptoms of a mood disorder, which for me is full bipolar one. You can find more information about schizoaffective disorder up here, but besides that, let's get started. Because of my schizoaffective disorder, I have been on a wide variety of drugs, so I love sharing that knowledge with you guys, and if you are new to this channel, welcome, and if you are returning, thank you. But what exactly is Seroquel? Well, Seroquel is what's called an atypical or second generation antipsychotic drug. It's used to treat bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, obviously schizoaffective disorder, and major depression. It was developed in 1985 and approved for use in the United States by the FDA in 1997, and it's been widely used since. It's actually one of the most prescribed drugs in the whole world. And of course this makes sense because Seroquel is used to treat things anywhere from sleep to, yes, psychosis and also mood symptoms and depression. And as I've already stated, the tablets come in two forms, the instant release and the extended release. So when I was first put on Seroquel, I was given the instant release and the instant release looks like this. So it's a tiny little white pill and it's got 200 written on it and I assume that means 200 milligrams because it is a 200 milligram tablet. I was told to take two or three of those. I started with two, ended up with three. Um, after a while, and for reasons I'll explain later in this video, um, I was put on the extended release version of Seroquel with this, this little buddy. So it's a little bit smaller diameter wise, um, it, but the big difference between them is that you can see the thinner one is the instant release and the thicker one is the extended release. Um, both of them, uh, I ended up taking two of the extended release because they're um, three, they can, this, these contain 300 milligrams and then I take three of these like before that. So I didn't really notice much of a difference in terms of like taking them. Neither of them dissolve like Lamictal does. So I was winning anyway. Um, but yeah, that's what they look like. So Seroquel treats psychosis. It is an antipsychotic, and for me, it did treat my psychosis. I wasn't really delusional. I had very few hallucinations, but the problem was it didn't treat really any of my mood like disorder symptoms, like the affective side of schizoaffective disorder, the bipolar side, as I call it for myself, um, was definitely not treated with Seroquel. So naturally, as you can probably guess, I went into an episode and had to go back on my old drug, which is Zyprexa. I have also reviewed that. It is up here if you want to see it. So let's get into the meat of the video where we talk about the similarities and differences between these two forms of this drug. So basically, the instant release can be taken with or without food, typically at night because it causes drowsiness within eh, 30 minutes to an hour of taking it. While the extended release, you're supposed to take uh, 12 hours before you intend to wake up. So you don't necessarily have to take it right before you go to bed. For me, it took about four to five hours before I got tired with it. So I was able to actually stay up later while I was on it. While with the instant release, I would fall asleep pretty freaking quickly after taking it. Which brings me into the first side effect that people often complain about with any antipsychotic and that is drowsiness. So the instant release definitely made me drowsy at night. I would basically be non-functional uh, pretty soon after taking it and would need to sleep anywhere from like 10 to 11 hours. While the extended release would allow me to stay up until midnight 1 a.m. again and I would need very little sleep to get to the next day. However, me needing very little sleep in general is a sign of a manic episode coming on, which I did have, so I cannot tell you if that was um, really a change in the drug form or a change in my own freaking brain chemistry. So in summary, if the instant release is 100% drowsiness, the uh, extended release is probably around 40 or 50% of that. Neither drug made me tired during the day, which was awesome. The next big complaint that people have about antipsychotics is weight gain, and Seroquel is no exception to this. However, I kind of got the opposite. When I first started taking the instant release version of Seroquel, I actually almost lost my appetite entirely. Like if normal appetite is 100%, I ended up with around 10 to 20% on a good day. As a result, I wasn't eating very much. And at the same time, it made me nauseous. So when I would eat, uh, half the time I wouldn't be able to keep it down. My doctor prescribed me Zofran and that helped a lot, but yeah, at the end of the day, that was not a good side effect. And when I switched to the extended release, I got probably about 40 to 50% in terms of hunger. But the problem was, is again, I still had that nausea, still had to take that Zofran multiple times a day, 
and I was losing a lot of weight. Like in the span of four months, I lost almost 20 pounds. I have since gained six of that back, so do not worry about me. Another big complaint about antipsychotics, whether they're typical or atypical, is extrapyramidal symptoms. Now, extrapyramidal symptoms are basically um, a group of symptoms where you have uh, movement problems. It's kind of like having Parkinson's. It's actually called Parkinsonism. And so for me, I didn't really get any of those problems on Seroquel, which is really nice because for the last three years that I was on Zyprexa, I definitely had some shaking and I would treat it with Cogentin, which is a great drug for that. But I didn't have to do that on Seroquel, which was really nice. So some really weird things happened to me when I was taking the instant release version of Seroquel. And this next thing is actually the reason why I went on the extended release in the first place. And that's that I was having something called tachycardia, which is basically a scientific term for a really fast heartbeat that's over 100 beats per minute. The average person's heart rate is around 60 to 100 beats per minute. So me going up above 100 is not necessarily unusual for me. I do have a typically a fast heart rate, anywhere from like 90 to 110, but I was going up to the 150s for around like half an hour after I took the instant release version of Seroquel, and I'll be honest with you, that scared the crap out of me. So I told my doctor and he put me on the extended release. However, the extended release did this thing where it made me unable to poop normally, so I had to take something called docusate sodium. I will put a picture of it up over here. Hopefully I said that right. If I didn't, I apologize. Both forms gave me something called orthostatic hypotension, which is basically a term referring to a sudden drop in blood pressure upon standing. So if you're like me and you wanna jump out of the bed in the morning when your alarm goes off, because you're so frightened, you gotta be careful doing that because you might stand up, get a little bit lightheaded, and pass the hell out. I experienced this on both Zyprexa and Seroquel, so it was not a new side effect for me, but I was like, dang it, I have to deal with this still. But probably the weirdest side effect of me being on Seroquel was something called rhinitis, or rhinitis, or rhinitis, or something like that. Um, itis is a little medical, medical thing, a part of a word meaning inflammation, and I think Rhine is like referring to your nose, so it's like the inflammation of the lining of your nose and it's temporary, maybe lasts like an hour or two for me. The only inconvenience with it is when I'm trying to sleep, I can't necessarily breathe comfortably through my nose, so I just breathe through my mouth and it's gone in the morning. So Seroquel in the end was not for me, but is it for you? Have you taken it? Have you tried it? Have you not? What are your opinions on it? Obviously, I am in the comment section down below, but I'm also on Instagram at schizokizzo. I love replying to DMs from you guys to keep the conversation going about mental health. But good lord, another medication review down. I have more if you want to see them. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.